Welcome back to Forge 20. Today on this one day build, we're gonna be making a new haft for this hatchet. But first off, let me just say that Mr. Chickadee has a much better video and does a much nicer job than I'm about to do. So go check out his channel. He specifically has a video on putting, making and putting a new handle on an ax. It's great, you'll love it. Um, also, huge shout out to Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle for subscribing to my channel. That guy is hysterical. And if you like this kind of stuff, he, go check him out. He's currently building a crane uh, to help with excavating an underground bunker. It's awesome. Uh, I'll put links to both of those guys down in the description. And while we're on the subject of subscriptions and things like that, uh, hit that like button. Help me out. It really makes a big difference. Thanks. All right, let's get on with the video. Three, four. Welcome back. Okay, so for this one day build, we're gonna put a new handle or haft on this this X right here. Um, as you can see, I like to show you this other one, uh, which is a nice little hatchet. It works great. You can see I've done a lot of work with it. Um, it's actually a roofer's hatchet, uh, so it's got the nice mallet on the back and the nail puller and all that stuff. And what I like about it is that the handle is never ever gonna come off. You can see it's like threaded in there and peened in or something. I don't know. I've beaten on it with all kinds of stuff and that hammer, that handle has never moved one time. Whereas this one, you can see somebody's already been in there, tacked a nail in there. Honestly, it wasn't me. It's been like that the whole time I've owned this hatchet. I got, I don't even remember where I got this. Um, so we can save that wedge, but it's just a little short. That head is about two pounds. And I always feel like it's a little heavy for that short length of handle. Um, whereas this one, the one behind it, is like a four to five pound head. And it's on a 36 inch handle. Pull out so you can see the whole thing. See how much longer that handle is? The, the head is just a little bit bigger. But the handle is three times as long. So it's a good felling axe and it really does a number on a tree. I'd like to have an intermediate axe, something in between 36 and 12 inches. This one's 12 and a half inches. And this one's about 13, the little one. But in between 12 and 36 is 24. So I think we're gonna cut a 24 inch handle and shape it and put that head on it. So here's the piece of wood that I have. I've already marked it out. It's a piece of maple from the tree that I felled in my backyard about two, three years ago. I have actually quite a few pieces of that still left that I sort of roughly squared out. And every time I need a handle for something or just a nice piece of maple, I pull one down and do a project like this with it. Um, so I'm gonna take this end off because you can see there's a big knot and it goes all there's one that goes all the way back to here so I marked that and brought that line around we're gonna try and avoid this knot with the back knob and since this is a primarily a cosmetic feature that can be a little lower I'm pretty confident I can get rid of that one we're gonna cut right to the side of this and hope it doesn't go that way um, I think it actually goes that way at an angle because that's where the, uh, you can see here is the sap wood. So I think this goes that way. But I could be wrong. We'll find out when we cut it. So we're going to cut this sap wood off and put the bell in, flare the end like the big one. Actually, like both of them have that flared end. And kind of work the belly with the natural curve of the wood hopefully we get some grain line up there's a little more knots in this than i would like so maybe we'll be successful maybe we won't but we'll give it a shot
Now I'm going to rough out the part that goes through the axe head itself. And to do that I'm going to start by making four cuts all the way around. And I have the depth set by the jaws of the chuck. It's sticking up over the jaws of the chuck just enough so I can get as deep as I want but no deeper. You can see I'm getting pretty close to the line. Certainly I'm close enough that I don't want to go any further. I know I have plenty of room, but I don't want to go any further without checking it against the axe head itself. You see there's still some to take down there, and I know there's still some to take down there. But I think it's time to get the, the head off the old handle so we can check it against this one. So I don't know what happened here. This is my first audio fault. My phone just some reason failed to record audio, which it always records audio, even when you have the uh, volume all the way down, it still picks up the audio. I don't know why it didn't pick it up. Uh, I hope that's not going to be an ongoing trend. So yeah, this is me taking the... Uh, the head off the axe. I think at this point I decided that I needed to cut the head off and drive it through from the other end because the wedge was holding it. Yeah, here's me waking up, realizing that tapping on it's not going to get it off. All right, we'll jump ahead to cutting it off. Let's try a chisel we don't love so much. Say it's a little hard to tell, but it's a little chewed up on the end already. It needs to be sharpened. So don't mind if it touches the wedge. Oh yeah, it's going right through. And there it is. That's all there is to what goes through the head of the axe. So that's what we need to reproduce. And you can see now, that's like I'm holding it together at the split. See how wide it is? It's dried and spread away from the... Well, 
whereas it started as a saw cut, one thin saw cut. All right, so you can see here there's some peening. And it's starting to rust a little bit, so we'll clean that up. I want to put a little belly, more belly in there than it has now. Same thing here. Looks like if someone's trying to do it, it's a little flat, but it could be nicer done. We'll hone the edge up. And then we'll hit the whole thing with a wire wheel. It's, it's also got a few marks on the top where it's been hit with a hammer trying to get the wedge to sit deeper. There it is fitted it goes all the way down to the shoulder I'm not gonna put it on again because it was hard to get off the last time and uh, it was just a lot of back and forth back and forth fit try and fit it cut it a little more try and fit it cut it a little more it's all chisel and knife work so now we can go on to do the hand the rest of the handle and you can see here why we do the tenon first. See how it's slightly off center? But now it's easy for me to just thin down this side and that will put the tenon back in the center of the piece, which I want to do because it's already, it's a little thick, so it needs to come down a little bit. But this way we can make sure that the axe head is in the center of the handle. So now I'm just going to work the corners down to these inner lines and that should get rid of like this last little pinhole. Should work out alright. So I went and rewatched Mr. Chickadee's video myself last night and it's kind of funny he's using different techniques than me I don't have a draw knife it's one of the things that's on the list so I'm gonna do most of these roundovers with a rasp um, and he cut the uh, 
the tenon almost all the way down but he's using a soft wood wedge and I'm using a metal wedge um, so I don't believe I'm gonna cut it down as deep so yeah there's that All right, there we go. We're getting down to a place where I'm getting closer to happy with it. It needs a little more polishing. But uh, most of this was done with this rasp. It started with this one, which is, this is plaster of Paris. It's got stuck in there. It was used to do a sculpture, but uh, it rasps wood just fine especially on this side, it's very aggressive. And this one I really like because it has an aggressive flat, an aggressive round, and a less aggressive flat and a less aggressive round. So it's really nice to be able to flip back and forth and get inside curves and things like that, which I'm not gonna waste your time watching me rasp and sand. It's just my fat belly jiggling over a piece of wood so figure you're more interested in results than anything else you YouTube crowd you all right so I'm gonna sand a little more and then uh, we'll get to putting the head on which I'll definitely show you that <clears throat> a couple of little pinholes here and then there's this side knot I'm not worried about the side knot at all this one here is the one that we talked about in the sort of cosmetic end. There's one tiny one in the deadwood up here, so I don't worry about that at all. But this one and this one. Let's see, this one and this one. You know, they could be problematic. They do go through. But I've been working with maple since I was a kid. We used to cut it and make staffs and all kinds of stuff with it. And it's a lovely hardwood. It's really tight grained, no pores. It's not like oak where it has all these pores that wick water. And I have found it to be virtually indestructible even in thin branch sections. So hopefully this will survive. I got the fawn's foot fairly well defined. I just love the idea that that's called a fawn's foot the bottom. I beveled the edges. We'll see if the camera stays in position for this one. I doubt it. Good, ready for the wedge. All right, it's seated against the shoulder. The wedge is slightly proud. That way when things get loose, you can tighten them up again. You can see, let's see if I can make it focus. No, but there's a little flare to the wood. That's right in. Let's go chop something with it, huh? Okay, I chopped this branch off earlier from this arborvitae, which I pull poles off these trees all the time. And, uh... It totally somehow didn't end up on the camera. Let's see if we can try this again and actually get some footage of chopping huh let's give it a shot
This is stuff that was cut last year. It's pretty dry. That's exactly the kind of thing I want that for. This axe works great. It's light, it's easy to handle, it's sharp. I can swing it one-handed in weird positions. It's exactly what I wanted. And having used it now, I feel like as long as I treat it right, those knots are not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna go rub some linseed oil on it. I'm gonna call that done. I'm honestly so pleased with it, I gotta take some more pictures of it. It swings really nice. I've just been standing here swinging it around in circles. You can see the head. I just really like it. I hope you guys do too. Thanks for watching. Hey, hit the subscribe button and the like button and the bell and all that stuff too. Help me out, would you? Forge 20. Da -da -da!